Happy Hump Day to you. You're watching or listening to Midweek News on the Practical IT Channel. This is episode number 44 for September 27th, 2023. Let's get started. The Linux Journal Guide to Setting Up Remote Desktop on Linux. It can be a challenge to set up remote desktop on Linux, and this is a great starting point to tackling the task. You've got to take into consideration different desktop environments and different window servers, and this can create problems for a turnkey solution. So check out the article if you need remote desktop access on your Linux box. Gnu turns 40. There's still not a completely down to the kernel Gnu OS that is ready for prime time. Maybe we'll see this happen before Stallman passes, but I for one am not holding my breath. Long-term support for the Linux kernel to be modified. The Linux Journal reports that future LTS kernel releases will go from being supported for six years to just two years due to maintenance challenges. Time will tell whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. If you're using a Debian or Debian-based distribution, you will want to make sure to read this article on when to use apt clean, apt auto clean, and apt auto remove. Using these tools will help keep your system tuned up and able to be maintained over multiple years. Winget UI gets custom sources, filtering, and performance boost in version 2.1.0. While I prefer the command line version, Winget UI can be useful for giving people an option to opt out of using the Microsoft Store. Unfortunately, Winget is still not a true package manager and is more of a front end for XE and MSI installers that already exist. Still useful, but it could learn a lot from apt, DNF, and homebrew. Language tool, an alternative to Grammarly. While I have yet to get this installed and configured, I was sold when I read that it works with LibreOffice. This is something that Grammarly still cannot claim. The disk utility, an alternative to the DF command. This is disk, D-Y-S-K. The disk utility caught my eye since I've been working with more elaborate systems of partitioning for a project. The disk utility, while not a standard pre-installed tool, can be quite useful. Just having the quasi-graphical table layout is an improvement and it's got more tricks up its sleeve. Expect a dedicated video on this utility. The FCC will try to reinstate net neutrality. The FCC is reportedly ready to reclassify broadband as an essential service. The article is an interesting read, especially for anyone who has had to deal with throttled speeds. LibreOffice 7.6.2 and 7.5.7 .7 released to handle WebP critical vulnerability. This pair of releases addresses a fix for CVE 2023-4863. This security issue also impacts all major web browsers like Mozilla Firefox, Chrome, and Chromium, and Edge. USB Imager, a cross-platform disk image writer. Available for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. This tool offers an alternative to tools like Rufus and Belena Etcher. Those tools that write a single ISO or IMG file to a USB stick. Other than for Raspberry Pi usage, I am using Ventoy. But if I can avoid the ads in Belena Etcher, this might just earn a place as a staple utility. GNOME 46 targets a March 20th, 2024 release date. Hot on the release of GNOME 45, there is already talk about the next version. According to the currently available timeline, you can expect an alpha in January beta in February, 
and release candidate on March 2nd. No details are available on planned features at this time. Firefox 118 is now available. It includes the awaited website translation feature that was previously mentioned. Linux users get support for fractional scaling on Wayland, although this feature is disabled by default. We also get support for video effects and background blur on Google Meet. And that, friends, will bring us to the end of episode 44 of Midweek News. Thank you for watching or listening, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.